Welcome back to JB Reviews. I have a 2023 Toyota Tundra and a 2023 Ram 1500. I wanted to show you guys around these trucks really quickly so you guys can see a comparison between the top trim levels from both brands. Special shout out to Larry H. Miller for supplying these two trucks. This is actually used. It only has like 50 miles on it or so. So be sure to check this out. And let's go ahead and start with the front ends. Now, if you're looking at a capstone, this truck does have, I wouldn't even call this chrome, it's like a polished aluminum. And the same thing goes down below. It has a really nice appearance to it. Forward facing camera, it's right there. And look at the fog lights, really nice design there. You almost don't see them unless they're on. And then check out these projectors. You have a quad beam and they have a ton of color on the cutoff too. Parking sensors are pretty much hidden throughout. And this has a really in your face bold design too, I would say. That blue color looks great. Now here's the Ram. The Ram has a dual beam projector. And you guys can see the accent lights, pretty much like the Tundra. And then here are the fog lights too. There are tow hooks on the front of this truck. And you guys can see that this truck does have a blackout appearance. And it has a sport performance hood. You cannot get a black appearance with a capstone. So this is the only available appearance for it. And then here's the hood on the side. This is iForce Max too. So depending on what you're looking for, I think that the Ram has a little bit better appearance up front for some people. I do like how they hide the parking sensors as well. Now, as far as the Tundra goes, let's go ahead and pop the hood and discuss the powertrain. So let's start with the Ram first. This engine does have a mild hybrid system. It's gonna have 395 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque coming out of the engine. Now you do get supplemental power out of the mild hybrid system, 130 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed transmission. Now this truck does have the optional 392, but it comes standard with the 321. And as far as the Tundra goes, you only have the full hybrid system for the capstone. Now this truck does come optional with four-wheel drive. The capstone with this system comes standard with uh, four wheel drive basically. Now this truck, you ready for this? Has 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque, 10 speed transmission, and it also has a 331 axle ratio out back. So I do like this configuration the best. It comes standard. And I think in the cities where you're gonna see the best benefit, if you do stay tuned, be sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure your bell notifications are on. I am gonna be comparing these two engines on the highway and do some performance testing too. Now, as far as the wheel design goes, this depends on the person. I do like the capstone wheels. They're very big, big face wheels, I should say. And the tires are a Bridgestone Dueler, 265.50, and coiled suspension up front versus Ram's optional 20 inch wheel. These are the 22s, but if you get a Ram, 20s are gonna come standard. And these are 285, 45. So air suspension will come standard on the Rams. However, on the side here, this power to pull bar running board is an option. Same thing goes for the capstone here. It does have the power to pull bar running boards. Those come standard. Smart key system, for the front doors, not the rear. And the same thing goes for the Ram as well. Now, something that Ram has an advantage on out back is you do have an option for a six foot, four inch bed. With the Toyota Tundra, it only comes with this capstone with the five and a half foot bed. And as far as the tailgates go, let's go ahead and check out what Toyota has here. So there's a button on the side, and check that out. I think that this is pretty innovative. I do also like where Toyota puts the lighting in the bed. Now this is manually operated to put it back up. There is a light here that shines down for your class four receiving hitch, backup camera. There's two camera views above right there. And on the Ram, 
this is a five and a half foot bed. I do like how Ram gives you a sensor on the side. Toyota does not do that. But as far as the tailgate goes, there is a light down below, a little bit wider for the class four receiving hitch. The parking sensors are nicely hidden too on that plastic piece. Twitter does a pretty good job too, I'm not gonna complain. You can't really see them. And as far as the tailgate goes, it is assisted, and you can put it down with the key, but there's no button except for the one that I just pushed. There is a button here for the bed lights. And it does turn the lights on above. There's one camera view above for the rear view mirror. But for the most part, I would have to say that Toyota has a little bit more features on the outside that comes standard. So I think that's where the Toyota Tundra wins at. The 331 axle ratio too is another advantage because your first, second, and third gear are so deep in this Tundra that you don't really need lower gearing out back like the Ram does. You do have dual exhaust out back versus Toyota's single exhaust off to the side. I think that Ram's overall design is better, especially with the Night Edition package as well. Both trucks do have full LED tail lights and they both have LED license plate lights too. So here's the door card. Really beautiful and great attention to detail, like even the speaker grills like have a nice accent to them. Very luxurious. There is some hard plastic down below, but that's pretty typical on these trucks. Now, as far as your seating goes, you do have a lumbar support that goes up and down, but you don't have any support here. Manually operated steering columns still, but you do have power pedals down below. Now let's go ahead and check out the Tundra. The Tundra comes in swinging on the interior. The white appearance is a nice accent, and I love the wood grain right there. Both trucks have real wood grain. You can feel the, you know, the grain in the wood actually too. I do like the mirrors better on the Toyota Tundra because they do work with the keyless entry, so they go open and close without having to push a button like the Ram. You do have more seating controls on the Tundra. Same lumbar support controls there. Power steering column. And like I said, I think this is a beautiful interior. Now let's go ahead and jump into the Ram so I can show you guys the uh, gauge cluster here. By the way, the Tundra did not have power pedals down below. So push button starts right here. So this is a 12.3 inch screen. Ram has, in my opinion, the best. And it's not because of anything other than it's so customizable. So you can change the information throughout the screen. It's full face, so like navigation could be shown in here. Your trailer information is just a little bit easier to use. Like look at the screen setup here. So you have screen setup, so you can change all the information in this screen here, guys. Like it's, it's really good. It's just the best. Heads up display. Both trucks do have heads up display. This is an option though on the Ram. So let's just make sure we make that clear. But you can change the content layout. You can do a custom, you can do a simple. So yeah, this system is so customizable. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Toyota's. So push button starts right here. Look at Toyota flexing with the power steering column. Now they have a large screen just like the Rams, but I gotta be honest, this screen is just a letdown. The only place that you can change information is in this box here. That was a mistake on Toyota's side. I looked around the truck to make sure I wasn't making that up. I like, maybe, maybe there's some more buttons to control, but yeah, the iForce with the turbo boost and the max for the hybrid system, that's all fixed there. You have your gauge cluster. Now it's a nice readout here. I'm not saying it's not nice, but you just saw how you can customize the Ram. Toyota doesn't give that to you. Now you can turn off all your, your safety features here and it's all very convenient. But I think that, again, Ram wins with this screen. They're gonna win with this screen too. And let me just show you what I'm talking about. So as far as the information goes, 
there's not a lot of detail in this screen. Now this screen is larger than RAM's. This is a 14 inch display versus RAM's 12 inch display. You also have this camera view too that could be disabled if you don't want to use that. But I just think that Twitter needs to do more work here. And it's not a bad system. There's just not a lot of information in my opinion for you to really look at. So here's a few things here. But dual climate control down below. I do like how you have your heated and ventilated seats outside of the screen. On the RAM is not that way, which you'll see here in a second. But let's go ahead and jump back over to the RAM. So I'm on the home screen on RAM. So you have these widgets. So you can pretty much add things in like your climate here if you want. You can have your, your seats and wheel controls right there. You see that? So even though you don't necessarily have those buttons on the outside, they do still make it convenient for you. I, I, I keep hitting the wrong button. There it is. That's what I want to show you guys. So you can have your navigation right there. And then, of course, you can keep your seats on the same page, basically. That's what I want to show you guys. Now, as far as your cameras go, this is where I think RAM needs a little help because this is very confusing. So you have your surround view camera. I get that, right? So you have all these different camera views. That part of it I get, but when you go here, there's just a lot going on. Let me show you why I like Toyota is better. With Toyota, all your camera views are right here. They're easy to read and understand. You push a button, you just go to it. There's the front wheels, here's the rear wheels. It shows you the bed. And yeah, it's just, I feel as though it's just a little bit easier to use. That's just my opinion but I think that Rams is just confusing. Just like Ford, Ford and Ram are the same when it comes down to their cameras. There's just a lot going on. Now here's where Ram destroys everybody, including this Toyota Tundra. Center console. So you do have this storage here that does slide open. If you wanna grab some change right here, they have some USBs, and then you have a small little storage here. Maybe you put napkins or maybe your wallet will fit in there. Let's see if my wallet will fit in this little guy. It will not fit. So yeah, my wallet won't even fit in there. So you open this up. Now this is still pretty good. I think it's better than a lot of the competitors. You have some USBs in here. You have two right there. You have one above right here. Your cup holders are right there. You have some full -wheel drive controls, drive modes with tow haul. And then you have your electronic parking brake and then a hold for if you're at a stoplight. But here's where RAM comes in swinging at. You have four USBs here. You have one in there. That's five at the front. And the Toyota Tundra, you only had three. But doesn't stop there. Your wireless charger, just like the Tundra, wireless charger's there. You have a power plug down in here too. But look how deep this is. And doesn't stop there. This slides to give you a little bit more storage out back too. So they give you these covers for the top trim levels. So you can hide those cup holders and some of the storage here. But this is just the better center console out of all of them. It's just well thought out. And I think that Ram's just killing everybody. And this truck does have the air suspension, your parking sensors. This is, everything's a little bit easier to get to. I do like that they give you a button right here. And the Toyota Tundra, you have to go through the screen to disable some of the stuff that you guys saw. Up here, your lane keep assist, your self parkings right there. They do provide some storage above and below. Let's take a look at the Tundra. Tundra only has storage below with no top storage. But as far as the interior goes, you do get a standard panoramic sunroof in the capstone. That Ram over there doesn't even have one. It is an option, but standard. But overall, I do think I like the Ram's interior better. This white interior is beautiful. And the speaker grill, even though it's just plastic, it does have a nice appearance to it as well. Let's jump in the back seat. Unfortunately, it's raining outside, so I have to kind of do the video inside. You do have air vents, outboard heated seats, and ventilated seats. Two USBs, you have a Type A and Type C, 120 volt power plug, and there is a hump in the center here. Not a big deal. Seat back pockets, but check this out. Ram can't touch this. Love that they give you the curtains out back. They don't have to do that, but they do it anyways. By the way, this glass slides all the way down. Cup holders in the center. 
but unfortunately there is no storage under the seat and that's because of the hybrid system so there's no storage under the seat and this cab is noticeably smaller than the ram you guys see this this seat is all the way back and look how much room i have grab handles right there great interior detail even out back that speaker grill matches the front heated and ventilated outboard heated seats power plug four usbs and ready for this this has a larger armrest with cup holders and storage and look at the floor flat floor surface huge cab you can clearly tell a difference between the two trucks doesn't stop there though this seat pops up just like that toyota and you have that storage down below here that was missing in that toyota tundra and these seats recline so watch so these seats out back recline in the toyota tundra that was not available however toyota tundra did have a window that went all the way down and i'm waiting for everyone to copy that because i love that now here are the numbers on the door you guys can pretty much see gross field weight ratings right there axles out front 3900 pounds the rear is 4100 pounds 1312 pounds of payload capacity now as far as this tundra goes you have a gross axle rating out front at 4080 pounds the rear is the exact same but you guys see the gross vehicle weight rating? 7,670 pounds. And then here's the payload, 1330 minus 61 pounds, which gives you 1,269 pounds of payload capacity. So this truck is heavy, like really heavy. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video I do comparing these trucks. I'm gonna drive them, show you guys zero to 60, all that good stuff, and see which one has the best performance. See you guys in the next video. I bet you guys thought I forgot to show this. I almost did. I almost did. So the Toyota does show better city MPG, but they do have the same highway. Base price for the Tundra is 77,645. Base price for the Ram, $67,650. But the night edition and the limited level one equipment group really jump the price up but if you do take off the night edition and add the sunroof this truck is considerably less expensive so $79,615 versus $80,480 and you see there there's not a lot of options on this truck guys so hope you guys like the video Ram does have the 33 gallon fuel tank option this truck has like 32.2 gallons I think it's like 32.2 gallons so yeah about the same there and it comes standard on this truck I believe this has a 26 gallon tank Standard.